at the end of the first year of, of the Dick Van Dyke Show on CBS, now we all remember that with reverence. It's in one, it was five years of wonderful television. But at the end of the first year, the man who was running CBS at the time, a man named Jim Aubrey, known as the Smiling Cobra, a very mean kind of guy. He could also be very charming, but, but, but he was very, he was the boss. Kind and of ruthless, was he? I would say if, with a capital R. And, and for whatever reason, now mind you, he, here he was dealing with people that he'd done a lot of business with, Danny Thomas, for one, uh, who had, had a very successful show on, on, uh, on CBS. He canceled the Dick Van Dyke show. He really did it, I think, because he had other shows from other producers that he preferred, which is a whole other story about... You're suggesting favoritism? Uh, yeah, but let's call it favoritism, for lack of a better word. Shows that might be done by friends, whatever. But he canceled it, and, and the ratings were only so-so. They were certainly not bad, and the show had been praised because it was critically well-received, but it, it, uh, it wasn't a big success at the moment. And so he, here he was telling P&G, Procter & Gamble, the biggest advertiser, I guess, at the time, uh, of all, uh, that uh, he was going to not let them have their show on CBS the following year. And, and this is where the, the, the relationships between agencies and networks and whatnot and advertisers becomes rather odd. But Procter & Gamble had a man named... Uh, Halberstadt, who was in charge of all their advertising. And he, and he, he was just a, a, a gentleman and, and, and acted in a very gentlemanly way. And he didn't know how to go up against a guy like Jim Aubrey or didn't choose to, even though he certainly had the power to. And, and so he, in effect, you know, let the word get, get out to California that the show was canceled. And uh, even though they owned the show. And Sheldon Leonard just wouldn't have any of that. And so he made a famous trip. Now he, I think, told this a little differently, but this is the way I remember it, that he, he went to Cincinnati, flew to Cincinnati, and he went in to see Halberstadt. And Sheldon, for all of his sort of these does and dem parts that he played on in, in shows himself, was a very articulate man. In fact, he sort of gloried in using four-syllable words and, and, and he persuaded Halberstadt that this show was too good to be canceled. Halberstadt, on the other hand, knew that he had Jim Aubrey to deal with, and, and he really didn't want to get into a fight with him. So he, he wound up choosing a middle path, which was, Sheldon, if you can find another advertiser to take half the show, we'll keep half the show. Sheldon then flew on to New York, and he went to see a guy named Nick Keesley, who was with an agency called Lennon & Newell, and uh, Lennon and Newell represented was a, it was Laurelard, I guess. Did they make Kent cigarettes? I think it was Laurelard. It was a cigarette company. P. Laurelard and Company. And and as 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 the legend goes, uh, Keesley uh, said to Sheldon, "I'm on my way to see the client right now." The client, I guess, had offices in New York, and he said, "You can come with me." It was just his way of ducking, <laughs> making his, taking the responsibility, I guess. And and so. Sheldon went there to the, to the client's offices, and the way he told it to me once, he took off his watch. He, 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 Sheldon was always very dapper, and he had expensive watches and things. And he, and he, he put the watch on, on the table in front of him, and he said, gentlemen, this will take just, whatever he said, five minutes. And he, and he made his pitch about the Dick Van Dyke show, and they bought it. And they said, yeah, we'll pick up half of the show. And now he had two major advertisers, and even Jim Aubrey wasn't going to wrestle with both of them at the same time. And, 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 and Sheldon, in effect, saved the show, which would never have been seen again, and went on for four more years thereafter.